Hey guys, so this is the Green Bandit, back from a long break since the last video, and I've been uh, working pretty hard on this project. Uh, well, I've actually built this for, uh, it's been a couple months now, uh, tried it out a lot, now it's winter time, so I've given up uh, skating on it, and uh, I'll be waiting until the snow clears up from outside. I uh, just wanted to quickly show you what I've been doing. Uh, so uh, here's my electric skateboard. It's um, uh, something like 3.2 kilowatts. Uh, it has a uh, APS, Alien Power Systems, uh, engine. It um, is a brushless, brus brushless engine. So I wired it up here under the axle through here this is a piece of uh plastic from a can of uh proteins <laughs> one of these plastic cans here's some i think you call it chicken wire a net so that um you can uh, put the uh, electronic speed controller the ecs let me see if i can get it here a closer look um this was produ produced by, uh, uh, I think it's Alien Power Systems 2. Uh, I bought it on their websites. You should go check it out. It's really great. It works right out of the box. Here I connected the uh, receiver for the remote control, and here's the receiver. Uh, it has also, there's a receiver, and right next to it you have the uh, power converter. Um, here we have a uh, battery case, which uh, is fitted right behind the uh, front axle. I riveted, I bolted it with, uh, well, I screwed it with, uh, I didn't screw it. <laughs> I uh, put six screws into it, and it hasn't failed me since uh, I've been riding on it. I've ridden multiple kilometers with this, so it's really, really working very well. Up, I can go up any hill. Uh, I wear, weigh about 100 kilos, so it's really, really pushing quite hard. I measured uh, with my GPS, I'm getting about 25 to 30 kilometers per hour on a flat and about 20 to 23 uphill, depending on the angle, but definitely never less than 20. Uh, this is a Turnigy 6S uh, 5 uh, 5,000 milliamp hours, so 5 amp hours, I get about uh, half an hour ride by just pushing off when I, instead of just letting it accelerate by itself. By the way, um, this thing will burn out <laughs> if I press, if I go full throttle, so you have to be quite careful with the trigger on this. I might look into uh, um, adjusting the curves by, uh, because this you can plug in to the USB on your computer and uh, adjust how how much power it releases. And uh, here, the system that holds the engine is a uh, from an Australian um, company, uh, Inertion Skateboards, and uh, they have this uh, clip with a uh, real. Uh, carbon fiber um, board here to hold the engine and it attached very well and it's completely adjustable the angle is completely adjustable so that you can get good clearing from the back of your skateboard and it will 
you, all you need to do is just file down the axle in certain areas so I don't know if you can see clearly here um, right here um, on the left side of the axle I've filed it down a little because this um, this clip has a uh, an angle to it. Let me see if it's clear on this side maybe. Yeah, here you can see. See it's flat on this side and in order for it to hold well onto on this axle you need to flatten your axle a little bit. But it's fully customizable. Um, it will fit onto any uh, skateboard axle. I uh, added some uh, hot glue when I while I was screwing this uh, this bolt in it, and it allowed me to ride with this without ever having to um, adjust it, at, uh, except on the first run where it started moving, and then I just put this hot glue in here, and it fixed all my issues with this coming undone. Uh, here they give you uh, some kind of washer um, in which through which you need to put these long screws they go through the wheel all the way onto the other side and into this um, gear uh, I absolutely recommend that you use one of these vertical um, drills the ones that uh, are very stable. You cannot do this by hand. I tried at first drilling by hand through this uh, through the polyurethane, and it was just impossible. Uh, I kept sliding down into the middle, and uh, it was it really wasn't working for me. So I had to go over to a friend of mine who had one of these drills, and I had marked the position of each of these uh, where the screws had to go in the wheel and where they should come out on the other side in order for the um, uh, whole piece to be mounted correctly. Then um, one little trick here is that I adjusted the uh, depth of the wheel because once uh, not all skateboard wheels are made equal and of the exact same dimensions and so in order to get the wheel outwards a little bit in order to have this aligned properly. Um, I put in a couple washers between the bearing and the um, and the axle itself in order for it to uh, be aligned properly with the engine gear. This gear here was um, um, I heated it and then I it was actually a very very tight fit and so I had to heat it and then I, I hammered it in and I let it cool and it hasn't moved so this is probably the best way it hasn't ever slipped hasn't budged and I'm very happy with it um, there's one thing I'm very uh, unhappy about is that I got this from uh, China <laughs> on the net and it wasn't centered so as you can see here it's off by a good millimeter which does put some extra tension on my um, on this um, belt and so it's already broken one one time when I was out in the, the countryside skating with this and so it was uh, quite a disaster but since it just became a longboard I could skate home again so it really isn't a problem even if your engine um, uh, breaks down <laughs> you just keep on rolling and also uh, even in downhills the uh, this the longboard uh, really behaves pretty well and uh, even though there's a little bit of resistance coming from the engine, it doesn't seem to uh, cause any trouble. Uh, here on the side of my uh, battery holder, I uh, installed one of these uh, battery voltage meters, which uh, with an alarm. So when I get to the uh, 
assigned voltage uh, while the battery is working. If the voltage goes under 3.5 volts it, uh, it, per cell, it will, um, it will start ringing and therefore it's a good idea to stop. Here I, ins I put in a little, <laughs> very simply put in a small security feature. I s saw that the battery was slipping out so I just put this very simple this was a very simple solution. Uh, I'll better this someday somehow. Maybe with my future builds, we'll see if I continue making these. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this one. It's very solid. It's not moving. And so you just install the battery and close it. And on this side, I have a little scratch and there. Locks the battery in perfectly. Let me show you. Why is this not focusing? Hello. So here we go. And it goes here. Plug this in. There you go. Just checking everything. Yeah. And then uh, I just plug it in here. It will spark. <laughs> just a minute. go and then I just that's uh, the ESC oops wait a minute there we go and then I for security purposes because when when you ride this might go down onto the road this way I have a small easy system here where once again I use scratch tape and a um, one of these binder cables, binders, and there we go. Everything is in place and nothing moves. Very simple, very rudimentary uh, design, but it was just to keep it simple and to and the price to the lowest possible. I also went along and bought myself a remote, and this is the what I've done to this remote. I've modded it to make it rechargeable. So I opened the. Uh, this was uh, one of these pistol uh, grip remotes, whatever you, you call them. Um, and as you can see here, there's a battery uh, in the, instead of the normal battery, I emptied uh, one of these, I have a, I had an old laptop, so I took out the uh, batteries from it. And following a couple guides on YouTube, I made it into a, um, uh, 7.4 volt battery, which uh, corresponded to the uh, voltage of the original battery pack, close close enough. And uh, so here's what I used to charge it. And when it is charging, I just I hook it up to the uh, remote itself. Wait a minute. So there we go, it's plugged in, and I just turn the remote on. Very simple, painted it blue, put some uh, tennis racket grip on there, and as you can see, watch this, as soon as I press, and I guarantee I'm 100 kilos, uh, I have no idea what that is in pounds, but I can probably figure that out, I'll write it. And this thing burns out under me, so it has so much power. I would recommend maybe a bit of a smaller engine if you're a little lighter than me, but this was really to carry me up and down any hill. And it will go down any hill that you want at basically a little less than the speed you would get to if you were going down without an engine, but it works great and it's super reliable and I'm very happy with this product. I will post the... Um, the links to the products I, I used here uh, in the description and uh, yeah I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and uh, that it showed you how to make an electric skateboard watch this <laughs> that's not working wait a minute let's see so wait I'm indoor this is kind of cheating because I guess it doesn't show you the real power of this thing, but um, because it's on a, a carpet. But watch this. I'm standing on this.
watch this. Here's a little demo. And I like how that little light from the uh, from the uh, yeah like the um, voltage converter uh, shines blue and it kind of looks like it's a pipped out right. And I've ridden this at night, so it actually looks very cool. Uh, definite definitely a head turner. People are always impressed to see uh, a longboarder going uphill at uh, 30 kilometers per hour. Um, <coughs> I think 30 kilometers per hour is about a little less than 20 miles an hour, 15, 20. So yeah, I think it's a reasonable speed for a skateboard. You don't want to be going much faster anyway. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the vid. And I'll see you later, guys.